This is an iMac 13,1 from 2012. And Apple wants you to think that it's totally obsolete. Well, today we are CPU swapping an i7 into this still very beautiful and usable machine and installing the latest version of Ubuntu Linux. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy stemming the tide of e-waste and having fun doing it, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. This iMac 13,1 came out all the way back in late 2012, and it's kind of hard to believe just how old this thing is. The 21.5 inch IPS display is still bright and beautiful, and as a whole, it still looks fresh and modern and, well, brand new. But unlike a modern iMac, this thing is both very upgradable and super cheap. I found this 12 year old machine on Facebook Marketplace for $100, including a printer and a bunch of brand new ink that's actually now my main printer. So basically, I bought a printer and got a free this thing. But no complaints here because we've had a lot of fun with this iMac. Originally sporting eight gigs of RAM and a GeForce GT 650M, we maxed out the memory to 16 gigs, added a cheap SSD, and we've been using this as a Linux test bed, most recently with KDE Neon. But today, I wanna to swap out the stock Ivy Bridge quad core i5 for a nice fresh i7 3770S at 3.1 gigahertz. And we'll install the latest version of Ubuntu Linux 2404 and really see what this lovely machine is capable of in its fully maxed out form. All right, my favorite part again, we gotta fight through some adhesive to get this screen off because that's all that's holding it on. Fortunately, any of these super cheap re-adhesive kits that you buy come with these little plastic tools. Oh uh, yeah, nice and easy. Oh Jesus. And we do have to take everything out of here to get to the CPU. I won't do a step-by-step -step here, but I will link down below to the iFixit guide. But for now, disassembly montage. And now that we have our logic board out, we just need to remove the heat sink to reveal our nicely socketed CPU. All right, our CPU is actually stuck to the heat sink with thermal compound. That's okay. Just use our little pizza cutter to extract it and our new minty fresh i7. And yeah, painter's tape over the pins, lovely. Give this a quick spritz with uh, isopropyl alcohol since it had that lovely painter's tape on it. And into your new home you go. And as per usual, I will apply an entirely appropriate amount of thermal compound. All right, and back together, same way it came apart. Hello, sponsor, store? I need something that will help with my unrelenting stench. Today's video is brought to you by Scentbird. Now, I don't know about you, but I often smell of burnt reefer caps and solder fumes. 
Luckily, there's Scentbird. Scentbird is a monthly subscription box for perfumes and colognes. The last time I tried to buy cologne was just me, randomly spraying expensive testers on myself at a Sears. But Scentbird takes that uncertainty and risk out of the equation, because you're not committing to a whole expensive bottle of something you thought smelled good. Scentbird is affordable. Your first month is just $8, and less than $17 a month after that, which is honestly an incredible value. And you get to discover a whole diverse world of fragrances, including popular brands like Prada and Versace, and niche labels like Parfums de Marly. You get a 30-day supply of each fragrance, giving you time to decide which one really speaks to you. And it turns out, I do really like the one that I thought I would. Regent Leather by Thameen London, with notes of leather, musk, and lemon, and Yellowstone Ride with notes of whiskey, sage, and bergamot. And it's equally important to say that I didn't love all of them, which is kind of the point. If you're interested in trying Scentbird, scan the QR code or use the link down below. And with my coupon code ACTION, you'll get 55% off at Scentbird. Plus, you'll get free delivery and a free case. All right, I've got the screen back on temporarily through the cunning use of some bits of tape, just in case we have to go back in. If something's wrong, oh God, I hope not. Let's power this thing on and boot into the existing KDE Neon install. All right, it chimed. <laughs> Thank God for that. Uh, nothing on the screen. All right, a bit of fiddling with the display cable. Attempt number two. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, that is comforting. There we go, Intel i7, 3770, eight threads, and this is saying 3.9 gigahertz. <laughs> All right, if you say so. Uh, I don't wanna jinx myself, but this is quite a lot of success for an action retro video. All right, we are back together. I think everything is good. I'm gonna start this up and hold option to get to the boot menu. I've got our USB stick here with Ubuntu 2404. Plug that in, shows right up. Oh yeah, try or install Ubuntu. Oh, well, audio works. And uh, I don't think this is gonna see the Wi-Fi card. That's usually a weak point on Linux on Mac. I'm hoping once Ubuntu gets online, it will find the correct driver, but we're just gonna plug in a wire for now. No big deal. Just the essentials. And yes, install third-party software. Going to completely erase KDE Neon. All right, install complete. That was extremely fast. Let's restart. Man, this screen just looks so freaking good with that IPS display. Oh yeah, silky smooth. Let's go into the additional drivers app and see if it finds the Wi-Fi card. Oh no, we have Wi-Fi, look at that. That's the good thing about going with Ubuntu. It usually just works. No more ethernet cable. Let's run our obligatory screen fetch. And there we are, Ubuntu 2404 running on our i7, eight threads, 3.9 gigahertz. Temperature monitoring is working. We have our GT 640M Mac edition. <laughs> Probably a bit of a weak point here. I want to install Steam and see just what kind of gaming experience we can have on this thing. Quick detour into Firefox about config so I can turn on graphical acceleration. There we go. And now YouTube should play just fine. Oh man, ads. And I wonder if this can do 4K video. Audio from the 
let's see what this sounds like. Yeah, look, 4K video. Not too bad. Now, another great thing about running Linux on here is that, well, Steam has Proton, and you could play a lot more games under Linux Proton than you ever could on Mac OS proper. Yeah, like I want to try Fallout New Vegas on here, all I have to do is go into Properties, Compatibility, and Force Steam Proton. And now check it out, I can install this Windows game here under Ubuntu on this old iMac. Well, as you might imagine, it's not all roses trying to get modern Linux running on one of Cupertino's finest slabs. Let's start off with Minecraft. This is the very latest version of Minecraft. It runs pretty well on default settings. A little laggy, but certainly playable. And if we uh, crank some stuff down in video settings, we can have a pretty fine experience here. But let's turn our attention back to Steam. Well, it turns out we can't really run a lot of Windows games out of the box. Fallout New Vegas does not want to launch and neither does Skyrim. And the reason is not Ubuntu's fault at all. It's Nvidia's fault. Darn Nvidia. The Nvidia 390 driver will not compile for later versions of the Linux kernel, such as 6.8 here on Ubuntu. So we can't use the proprietary video driver for this machine, we have to use Nouveau. And, well, a lot of these Steam games won't run with the Nouveau driver. A simpler game like Brotato, despite being a Windows game, does seem to run and run fairly well. Yeah, totally playable. The Long Dark, which is a Linux native game, does run, technically. <laughs> It's not exactly playable, at least not with these open source Nouveau drivers. Now if we're in the mood to tinker a bit, which if we're playing with Linux, of course we are. There are some things we can do. There is this program called Mainline, which is a fork of the old Uku, which is, well, just a Linux kernel switcher for Ubuntu. It lets us download older kernels or newer ones and install them. There is also a repository here of someone who has ported the NVIDIA driver 390 up a bit, although it still doesn't seem to work under kernel 6.8. So I think what we could do, I'm going to give 664 a shot. And then I've edited the grub config. So we have a timeout of 10 and it will show us the menu. So now we can reboot and select a different kernel. So now in the grub menu, we can choose advanced options and choose our newly installed old kernel and see if it boots. All right. Okay, well, apparently that PPA doesn't work for Ubuntu 24 for some reason. The driver is not available. All right, I've done uh, a little bit of hacking. Some of it is perhaps not the safest idea, but let me show you what I did and then we'll reboot and see if it worked. I found that this NVIDIA EXP repository, well, it doesn't work for Noble, but it does work for 2204. So I manually edited the repository information to go back to Jammy and ran sudo apt update and then, well, tried to install the driver. That coupled with the fact that we downgraded the kernel I'm hoping will allow us to boot with that driver, which wouldn't otherwise work. But I'd say we have maybe a 50-50 shot here. So let's do a reboot and cross our fingers. All right, at the grub menu here, we will again choose kernel 664. And I do believe we've booted into a black screen. All right, well, I've been hacking around with this for quite a while and I cannot get it to boot up with an older kernel and the 390 driver at the same time, at least not to a usable desktop. 
I did have some luck with the 418 driver, although it didn't work quite right. There was a phantom display and it was scaled weird. And uh, yeah, so I went back to the stock setup with Nouveau, perfectly usable, just not really for gaming. Perhaps someday, NVIDIA will update the 390 driver so it will work properly with the latest version of the Linux kernel. And thank goodness for the Nouveau driver because they understand there is no reason to leave perfectly good hardware behind. But that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more stuff like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Alex the Rat, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Darren Johnstone, Dave's Garage, Drew Hamlin, Eduardo Fonseca, Free Hours 9, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George Rajansky, Graham, Greg from Rutk Mods, Harris Brody, JS, James Fryman, James Laurie, Jason Pipas, Camille Rakowski, Lyle Truid, Matthew Crowell, Nick Daniels, oh, it's just Jose, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Steve Salivan, Tom Woodfin, Unknown Soldier 41, Veronica Explains, and Xantronics Industrial, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.